everyone, and welcome to Carnivology. I'm Katrina, I'm here with Lucy as always, and Carnivology is a little bit different from our normal programming. We would, in normal circumstances, we would be doing Carnivology in a room with all of you lovely people and telling you all about Carnival, which is coming up uh, this weekend, if you're listening when we this just comes out. It is a sort of mock lecture on carnival and all of the celebrations which you won't see this year but hopefully if you're in Maastricht in the future or if you've been here in the past you will see all the wild and wonderful colourful events going around carnival in Maastricht at this time of year. Lucy where are we starting? Where do we even begin with carnival? (laughs) Oh a few thousand years ago, I think. <laughs> oh, just a few thousand. That's fine. <laughs> just, a, just a few thousand. I, I think, uh, I think our, our regular listeners, or um, at any rate, anybody who's got any sense of what Maastricht is, uh, does realise that quite a lot of the of the stuff, whether it's buildings or customs, tend to have deep roots in time. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things go back a long time here. Mm. What we, uh, what this lecture will be dealing with, a uh, very quick outline. I can explain a little about the origins of it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, give you a brief description of the history of it. So we'll we will sort of uh, hop, skip, jump through a few thousand years <laughs> and then give you some sense of how this is connected to different cultures in different periods. Yes. Um, uh, zooming in on this region and the way it was uh, it was celebrated here in the past. And then we will deal with uh, what's going on right now, or not this year, but normally. And we will conclude by just a few words of advice to anybody who wants to participate, who, as far as I am <laughs> concerned, should be just anybody. Because, you know, it is for everybody. It really is. Yeah. Just not this year. (laughs) And I I would like to also say that if anyone has any questions, normally if we were doing this in person, there would be a bit of a QA and and an open discussion. So we'd love to encourage any questions that you have about Carnival, pop them in the comments wherever you are listening or watching this lecture and we will try to answer them the best we can <laughs> yeah yeah and that that caveat uh, is quite necessary because every time we um, we do this at carnivology there will be questions that uh, i cannot answer <laughs> and that that also other lecturers from the templiers have not been able to answer so you know bear with us there's not there <laughs> will be some mysteries left unsolved here yes the, always i think carnival is very mysterious in general <laughs> <laughs> There's always some things you're just not meant to know about Carnival. <laughs> Katrina, it's a big party, basically. <laughs> Full of secrets, Lucy. <laughs> well, you know, that might be that might be part of the fun anyway. <laughs> Shall we start at the beginning? Yes. Where are we starting? A long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. In the mists of time <laughs> that nobody can really penetrate to any great extent but what we do have a sense of is that is that people have been celebrating the end of winter mm-hmm. ab- about as long as they were aware of being people or you know anyway yeah, yeah. marking marking the seasons yeah marking the uh, not necessarily passing of calendar time but definitely you know uh, people people of course perceived the changes of seasons and they would mark that time yeah and and uh, of course they have done that since time immemorial and the specific characteristic of what carnival is today has been the same for as far as we can look back in time and that is that is the element of turning everything upside down yes that is it that is a crucial thing and and uh, even even today that is that is also very much still very much in evidence during those 3 days everything is not as it is <laughs> Usually. No, definitely not. I no. I know that we, when we first uh, came to Maastricht in 
January 2019, 1st of January, so we only had to wait a, a month and a bit for our first carnival and we had no idea what was going on. We just walked into the city uh, unknowingly and oh, um, definitely <laughs> up, everything was upside down. Everything, it was very confusing. Uh, <laughs> there were so many people in costumes. We saw we were walking into the city and it was sort of really quiet on the outskirts and just an astronaut walked past. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> people in big costumes and things were like, what is happening? And the closer you get, you hear the music and you see yeah. all the colours. <laughs> so it's definitely a, a topsy-turvy time. <laughs> yes, that is that is exactly what it is. And it was it was already that in Mesopotamia five thousand years ago, so Mesopotamia is is the, uh, generally the the indication of the valleys of the the rivers of the Euphrates and Tigris. Mm -hmm. That is that is present day Iraq mostly. Yeah. And and we know about festivals there where for the duration of the festival the slaves were the equals of the masters and the women uh, the uh, equals of the men and mm. you know that that was turning things upside down. Yes. And and also uh, there were similar sem uh, celebrations in ancient Egypt and Greece that we know about and there's uh, every time there's also this connection to spring. Mm. In the Jewish tradition, there is the festival of Purim, mm. which has a similar structure and one that sounds awfully familiar to, to people from the carnival celebrating regions is the Roman tradition of the Saturnalia. So that, that would have been that is a festival dedicated to the god Saturnus. Mm. And the, 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 the characteristics of that were that slaves were allowed to mock their masters. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, not, that's not equality. That is, you know, uh, uh, mock superiority. Yeah. There's lots of food and drink and, um, yeah, revelry and debauchery <laughs> and, you know. There were costumes and parades. Okay. Yeah. There was a, and there was a prince as well. Mm -hmm. And some type, some some type of this kind of celebration can be found all over Europe, and yeah. then with specific characteristics in different regions. So it is it is not something that is just Maastricht being weird. It is <laughs> it is something that has that has very old and very yeah. widespread uh, predecessors everywhere. Since it's connected to the seasons, it would be really interesting, I think, to look at uh, places that didn't have such strict seasons because I am finding I really enjoy now living somewhere where there are seasons that are very visible. The leaves turn orange in autumn and it's snowing at the moment and it's cold yeah. in winter and warm in summer. And But where I grew up, it was sort of not too different all year round. So I wonder yeah. if... Um, there were different kinds of seasonal celebrations in those kinds of places. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think you know who to ask in your country. Yeah, probably people <laughs> who've been there for thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they know. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I just. I mean. I, I do seem to remember something about about wanderings connected to food supply. Mm. And that must that must have been connected to changes in the weather as well. But yeah, yeah. that's true. Anyway, <laughs> back to Maastricht. Of course, these regions, most of Europe, mm. uh, have been heavily influenced by Christianity for about two thousand years by now, mm -hmm. and that, of course, has been has been a crucial influence on everything that went before that. You know, it's not not just not just carnival in its uh, heathen versions, but uh, everything else as well. And you you see the influence of Christianity waxing and waning. And but it's the the, the combination of Christianity and carnival has always been problematic, <laughs> mm. <laughs> as you can well imagine, since carnival's essence is of course irreverence. Yeah, I mean, for a religion. Uh, mm. For centuries, also a state religion. Yes, that must have been a difficult thing to swallow, and mm. there were there were centuries on end when they did not manage to do so. And I mean, even even when in the time that that my my parents 
were children. Mm. So we're, we're talking about the 1930s, 40s now. Mm. It was still customary for the Catholic uh, priests to keep their flock in church for as long as they could possibly could during carnival. Yeah. Okay. And to uh, and to uh, vehemently discourage people uh, participating in it. Mm. And that and that changed in the in the sixties and, and, and seventies. So, you know, I have never had to spend a carnival praying <laughs> like my parents had to. Yeah. Oof. No. But I was four months old at my first carnival. <laughs> they took me out into the streets with a lampshade on my head. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Little Lucy the lamp. <laughs> yeah, as you do. Yeah, well, I mean, my my name means light, so that was a that ah. was quite that was quite a clever combination, I think. <laughs> so you've been celebrating since you were very very small. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so be, people here tend to talk about it as a sort of genetic fact. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a bit ridiculous. Anyway, I am I am going to um, hop, skip, and bounce through uh, <laughs> the the Christian. Uh, centuries because because it is it is rather interesting how they tried to stamp it out and never yeah. managed so that that was of course the, uh, the 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 first response of christianity in the in the early centuries of christianity we are just going to eliminate this this mm. is this is heathen nonsense this is uh, immoral uh, we can't have this debauchery and of course that didn't work no <laughs> This sort of thing never works, and you know why authorities, time and again, are stupid enough to try it. But anyway, around the year thousand, so you know this took a while, mm. about about seven centuries. They started making efforts at integrating carnival into the Christian liturgy, and of course, this sort of thing has happened with lots yeah. and lots of stuff that we now think is Christian, but actually goes back to the pre-Christian era. Yeah. And what the way the way to do this was to use the calendar. And this makes this makes sense when you look at uh, the way the Christian church organized the year. The most important celebration of the Christian calendar of course is Easter. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord has risen. Yes. We we are all redeemed, but that celebration is of course preceded by the horrible story of his torture and crucifixion and death and that is preceded by the 40 days of Lent and that was supposed to be a, a time of uh, you know soul searching and praying a lot and abstaining from all kinds of worldly pleasures yes so they thought it would be a good idea to put carnival on the three last days before Lent that seems a bit mean. It was meant to to give them the opportunity to celebrate for three days, mm. but then as of Ash Wednesday, they had to behave for forty days. Oh right, okay. I thought you meant at the very end of the forty days of Lent. No, no, no. It's it's pre <laughs> no, no, no. Carnival, carnival has been put in the Christian calendar to precede Lent. Yes. So you know you can go all out for three days. Yeah. And then at the turn of midnight, when the Wednesday ah, okay. starts, it's over. It's all over. You go home, take the paint off your face, and behave. So anyway, that's that's how they that's how they thought they would you know fit it in, mm -hmm. and and sort of you know keep it within reasonable bounds, and and that is why uh, that is also why one explanation of the word carnival is mm. whether this is mock Latin or not I am not really sure but carne levare meaning mm. no more meat yeah okay possibly okay I don't know in in dialect we call it fast lavend. Mm -hmm. And that and that means the eve of fasting. Okay. Yeah. Because it, because in Lent you are supposed to fast. Yes. No one does that anymore. But so no. fast the is the eve of the fast. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, perfectly. So that sort of that sort of worked for a couple of centuries. Uh, from, from we have sources from the 12th to the 16th century mentioning a festival of fools mm. you know so so that would that would be the the, the medieval expression of uh, letting off uh, steam celebrating mm -hmm. having a good time yeah anyway and then and then of course uh, the reformation happened 
uh, a lot of people within the, the Catholic Church felt that the church itself had become much too loose and there was all year round debauchery going on and that a reformation was in order and of course that ended up in the church splitting mm. and at least a century of religious wars all over Europe. Yeah. But also in the Catholic Church, yeah, cleaning out its own house by becoming stricter and mm -hmm. uh, putting more restrictions on all kinds of things. So uh, the medieval festivals were over and the Catholic Church just banned carnival outright in the 16th century. Mm. Of course that doesn't work. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not when it's been happening for hundreds of years. I can imagine it's quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't help. So, it, but it, it it took anyway until the until the nineteenth century because before there was a resurgence to speak of, and then what what uh, what happened in the nineteenth century is that in this resurgence of carnival the you know there were there were there were not really a lot of old models to go on anymore i mean yeah. the infrastructure had been pretty much demolished, so people started to uh, you know invent traditions and uh, shape new cost customs and of course uh, also in Maastricht people were looking around for examples elsewhere. Mm. And some of that, of course, came from from uh, the city being a garrison town. So they were they were looking at all the at, at all the mock military in the uh, adjacent Rhineland, okay. where where Carnival has just enormous amounts of mock armies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's not get into that. But it also it also took uh, examples, uh, inspiration from celebrations elsewhere. It's an interesting mix of all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, as far as far as the middle class organizational aspects of carnival go, because all the rest of it is just whatever the people are up to. <laughs> that is something that has always been the core of this and uh, hopefully will always be the core of this. It is the people. It is all of us turning out into the streets and enjoying yeah. ourselves, you know, yeah. and attempts at, at regulating this are futile. <laughs> at, at, yes. attempt, attempts at organizing this are too. And at the same time, there is there is still an awful lot of, of back and forth between the city organization of the Templiers, mm -hmm. which dates from the 20th century, uh, early 20th century, uh, and, and all kinds of other organizations uh, all around the city as well. And they will, you know, they will, they will uh, negotiate and agree on things, and they will divide work, yeah. and they will. So, so there is, there is definitely a lot of organisation and coordination going on as well, and it's, and it's, it's something that you can really see this year now that the the entire people's part of it is banned. Now you can really see what the organisational side is doing. Mm. And they uh, they are all out with with competitions and with uh, all kinds of uh, digital tools for uh, entertaining people one way or another. Yeah. And what and what also shows up, especially this year, is the fact that carnival is also always about charité, and that is a Maastricht word. And of course, that is it sounds like the English charity, and that yes. is exactly what it is. Yeah. That is exactly what it is. These carnival organizations and the and the Templiers first among them, they have always been been paying attention to the people who need a hand in one way or another. And that, mm. that means that means visiting the hospital and that means uh, collecting money and donating that and you know, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that is uh, for for a decidedly uh, non-Christian celebration. That is a <laughs> that is a very Christian attitude to take, of course. And uh, one of one of the one of the fixed events on the Templars calendar is is also the the High Mass that will be that will be celebrated the Sunday before Carnival, oh, okay. where they will have. Um, 
and the deacon of Sauvage uh, blessed their uh, official flag. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we we had that uh, we had that uh, last Sunday. I wonder what the um, some of the church leaders from the past would think of that. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if all of them would approve at certain points in history. <laughs> no, I am absolutely convinced most of them would disapprove vehemently. But uh, except except in the church's centuries of debauchery. But yeah, no. This is this is all extremely prim and proper. I mean, RTV Maastricht has been. This is this is one way the Elizabeth Stuve Fund is spending money now. They they are the biggest charity in town. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a wealth fund, so you know they they are sitting on this enormous amount of money, and they're dispersing uh, parts of the interest on on all sorts of uh, mm. charities in the in the city. And and this was one of them, giving RTV Maastricht uh, money to uh, to record the uh, the high mass at Saint Sylvain, so all those parishioners who couldn't come to church could at least yeah. attend the services. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yes, it is. But so this also means that you can that you can find the Carnival High Mass mm-hmm. at the website of RTV Mastery. Okay, um, what we can explain now then very briefly is the calendar of affairs. <laughs> yes, uh, this uh, always confuses me. <laughs> yes, well, it is pretty straightforward, really. Yeah. Um, I'm easily confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know this this forty days is a is a pretty is a pretty solid measure to go on in many instances, and the same applies here. Carnival season starts at the eleventh of the eleventh, mm-hmm. so so November eleventh is the start of the carnival season. One explanation of that is that eleven is the number of the fools. You know, whenever you want to mock something, you put it into 11s, mm. uh, not to be taken seriously. But of course, when you when you look at the actual calendar, November 11th is 40 days from Christmas. Okay. Yeah. So that's the that's the Christian calendar connection. Over the years, that has evolved in Maastricht into a, a big party with uh, local and regional artists on the Vrijthof and then ever increasing numbers of people from outside Maastricht pouring in to participate in the party. And increasingly the people of Maastricht sort of shrugging their shoulders and going, yeah, not for us or no longer for us or I'm not exactly sure what the sentiment is there. But what happened uh, at any rate is that the city could simply not deal with the crowd anymore. Okay. So many, so many people were pouring in on November yeah. 11th. That, uh, yeah, it's mm. so eventually the uh, the city said, well, no more. We can't deal with this anymore. So yeah. um, there, of course, there was no November 11th this year be- be- because of Corona. But if there had been no Corona, there also would not have been a November 11th celebration. Okay. Oh, so when so having only just recently adjusted that cancelled the celebration? Yeah, of course. This year it was it was cancelled. Oh yes, yes. But before that, yeah. it, they've only just said that they won't do that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was, yeah, that is that is very recent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because in 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 uh, in in 2019 it was it was uh, it was still uh, being done but then uh, you know i think at 11 o'clock in the morning or something like that they were they were flashing signs in the in the streets at the station and at the bridge the vrijthof is full Ooh, okay please please stay uh, in other parts of the city and uh, in the course of the afternoon that became go back the city is full yeah so, okay yeah Okay, Carnival itself, as I explained before, is the last three days before Lent starts, mm-hmm. and Lent is 40 days before Easter. Right. All of this is on a moon calendar, so that means there are no fixed dates for okay. Carnival. Yes. Uh, e- East- Easter is on a moon calendar, and Carnival is connected to Easter. So Easter moves about and consequently Carnival moves about. But the earliest date for Carnival is February the 1st. 
-hmm. and, the, and the latest is March the 9th. So somewhere in that period yeah. we have carnival. That's a quite a big yeah uh, for <laughs> for yeah. if you're planning. That's quite a big big range. Yeah, yeah but uh, the the moon calendar is like that. It can't be helped. <laughs> then the order of the days on Saturday, uh, which is not officially a carnival day, is the coup d'état, and that is quite literally the case. Uh, mm. Six weeks before carnival itself uh, takes place, uh, the Templiers will have unveiled, or in this case more unmasked, their prints for the year. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, yeah, I've already said something about, about the 19th century, but before that it was celebrated as well. It has, it has ancient origins here too, just as, just as elsewhere. But the, the, the first attempts at actually organizing it date from the 19th century. And, and uh, here at Meet Maastricht, we've done an entire podcast at the, at the earliest forms of that 19th century organizing because that originated at Mormus. Our, it, I looked it up and it is number 13, episode 13 of the Meet Maastricht podcast. We, uh, <laughs> we talked about the Momus building. So if you would like to learn more about the Momus Society and the building itself, which I'm sure you can't visit at the moment because it is a restaurant cafe, but hopefully in the future you'll be able to yeah. go back in there. And, yeah. uh, and for I'm sure they have things on at, uh, during carnival as well normally yeah. yes yeah and and you know M mom is being uh, the protector god of the fools uh, <laughs> of course that was you know it it was it was built as a as a as a temple for a carnival really and it's uh, so so this is how the 19th century middle class uh, reconstituted carnival in Maastricht. Mm. And uh, the Templiers are their 20th century uh, descendants, so to speak. The, the Mormon society doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. No. But they, but they threw some legendary parties in the <laughs> 19th century, and we, and we have the resuscitation of Carnival in Maastricht. We, we can thank them for, for that. Yeah. So, um, our fools' caps off for you. Thanks. <laughs> so the uh, the Templiers are providing the uh, the organizational structure and some some degree of respectability to the proceedings. But of course, the heart of the matter, as I said before, is what Maastricht calls the Bon te Sturm. and that is yeah. How would you call that? A colorful tempest. Um, <laughs> yeah, a colorful storm. <laughs> yeah, colorful storm, and that—that's that, basically us. You know, that's that's whoever ventures out into the streets. Yeah. In in a guise we would never done in regular life, <laughs> um, which is the whole point. Remember this the, the the ancient theme of turning everything upside down and inside out. You can be whoever you choose to be during carnival, and uh, that's what we do. Yes, and it is, and it is, it is still the defining characteristic of of what goes on, and that's not just the case in Maastricht. I mean, there are some highly ritualized versions of 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 carnival in all the all the the regions where it is being celebrated, but uh, a common theme is also just you know the people out in the streets, the people celebrating. Yes, and that's. Uh, and that is also what is so what is so so you know liberating about it, of course. Mm. And it's uh, and it and it is also in once in a while I I come across the um, the perception that it would only be something for young people who like to drink a lot, but that is that is totally misguided. I mean, all generations are yeah. out in the streets. Yeah. And of and of course, families with children will be very much in evidence during the day and will tend to go home. When it starts to get dark, yes, and of course, and very cold. <laughs> Little tiny people need protection. <laughs> I, I can imagine this year it would have been absolutely freezing. <laughs> it's the coldest week of the year. <laughs> we do not care, and the children do not care. They are just—they are being bundled up. They are being. <laughs> 
they are being carried, they are being kept warm, and if you if you look at, at, at pictures and, and films of carnival, it is just astounding the amount of children that will <laughs> just sleep through it all. Yeah. Actually that's to be fair, the children look the most comfortable out of everyone. Yeah. If you because my <laughs> one of my favourite things is when they, they have the um I don't know what they call them. The, they're like carts, and they they just decorate the cart with the kids inside, and yeah. so they're all bundled up with blankets and <laughs> yeah. and snacks, and in their yeah. little costumes and having a great time uh, while yeah. everyone else yeah. is yeah, freezing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I probably yes. shouldn't worry about the children. No, that's the that's that's the one group you absolutely do not have to <laughs> have to worry about. It's just, and it's uh, yeah. There, people have found all sorts of ways to participate. Uh, you know, no, 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 no matter what, and it's yeah. and, and up to up to a very high age. And it's um, you know we make the party, and and uh, and an yeah. important element of that is well, well, of course the the, the defining characteristic is we are outside. We yes. are in the streets, uh, and of course, as it as it as as it is colder or more rainy, people do tend to go inside, and there are larger venues, and the cafes are packed. And <laughs> but most of it, the the atmosphere, the celebration is out in the streets, and a very important part of that is, of course, all the music being made in mm -hmm. the streets. Yes, uh, we we have two versions of that now. And th they have sort of been competing with each <laughs> other for a while, but I, I think a truce has been signed now, and they they meet in an orderly fashion, and they have established <laughs> some <laughs> some ground rules. There is the there is the uh, mid twentieth century tradition of the Zaterhemni, meaning the drunk band. Yes, which is generally not literally the case. <laughs> I mean, it is just not possible to be yeah. on your feet three, four, five days making music most of the time if you would be drunk. I mean, no. of course they'll have a beer, of course they'll <laughs> have several, of course some of them will have a lot, but most of them will play and yeah. play for hours. Yes. And it is absolutely amazing. Yes. So they, they are called Zad, meaning drunk, and generally they are not. <laughs> and, and some of them are near professional players, yeah. and some of them will only play their trumpet or their drum at carnival. So, <laughs> you know, that amounts to basically noise, not music. It is all appreciated. Yes. The, the, the Templiers will organize a big competition for the, all the music makers, and at the end of... Uh, you know, endless series of concerts and parades all around the city, everybody will get first prize. <laughs> because, of course, you they, it's not possible to decide who is best. No. Okay, the other variety, which is younger, mm. are the samba bands. Yes. So that is, that is all percussion. That is no singing. It's a different beat and it's a different atmosphere. Yeah. But it is also very much part of the celebrations yeah. by now. Really different costumes as well. Very very specific <laughs> sort of costumes. Uh they're amazing. There's the some of the summer bands are um, incredible to like watching a, a professional mm. marching band. <laughs> or the or the or the or the, or the legions of Mordor. <laughs> yeah, well the costumes <laughs> Sometimes it's a mix. It's a mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, interesting. So um, uh, that is that is the heart of the matter. And yeah. uh, and and uh, 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 what what the Zaterhemnikus will generally play is a is a back catalogue uh, stretching back into the 18th century of local songs. Yeah, I have uh, I have just found a little film. Uh, <laughs> Which which is themed the most beautiful song, and then every single one of those songs that people will start singing is a local one. Yeah, 
it's a really special tradition the um the local songs in local dialect and that yeah. there are so many over so many years it is a really unique and special thing i think to have yeah. in maastricht it's it's not unique for maastricht no. i mean a, a city like Ven- venlo yeah. i mean this is tra- this is traditional everywhere yeah. uh, every every community having its own catalog of mm of uh, songs in the local dialect and and the people from Venlo are especially geniuses at this just <laughs> you know the the the, the Maastricht ones generally are are uh, uh, a waltz or or a slow march and the uh, the Venlo ones are much more creative generally but okay. of course I, but, but of course I love the Maastricht ones <laughs> <laughs> anyway I have already talked, I think, about the 11th of November. And then the next thing after November 11th is uh, the Prince of the Templiers being shown <laughs> to the people. So there is this, there is this uh, uh, parade through the city and an unveiling at the marketplace. And uh, hooray, hooray, we've got six weeks to go before Carnival. Now I better get my costume together, that sort of thing. And the interesting thing here is that uh, the Templiers might uh, unveil or rather unmask their their prince, who is the city prince on mm-hmm. that day. But all around the city, there will be dozens of other princes and princesses <laughs> and dukes and yeah. you, you know an entirely uh, mock structure of authority will be in place for Carnival. I think if you if you are at home watching um the presentation and you can see the slide that is the prince for um for last year you are seeing 2020's prince uh yeah (laughs) so that's a very recent prince looking very happy yeah (laughs) and that is and that is the that is the prince of the templiers so meaning that is that is the prince of the city yeah that is that is the one who uh when he when he is unmasked he will be in in uh, formal dress, uh, the 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 black and white costume that all the Templars wear, mm-hmm. with with their fool's cap on their heads, of <laughs> course, in the in the carnival colours. But when the prince of the Templars comes into the city on the Saturday before carnival to take over power, he is in what is called his Burgundian costume. So this is a this is a lavish uh, a thing of uh, velvet and brocade and um, <laughs> rhinestones and uh, yeah, yeah lovely uh, inspired by the by uh, the Burgundy the, the the court of the dukes of Burgundy of the 15th and 16th century. Mm. I noticed in in the other picture is also holding the there is something special about the wooden staff, isn't there? With the yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, that is that that is what happens at City Hall. I mean, uh, there, there there will he will arrive in Maastricht by mm-hmm. train, and then there will be a ceremony at the train station, where the where the master of the train station will test the prince's <laughs> uh, lung capacity by having him blow on an ancient uh, train horn. So <laughs> it's, it's oh, silly carry on. The, the, this horn w- was used when trains were still new, and and I I think they were they were blown to to warn passers by a train was coming or oh, something okay. silly. Anyway, it's a very old horn, and when the <laughs> prince comes into the city, he has to blow it, and for as long as possible to prove that he has the lung <laughs> capacity to last the full three days. I yeah. mean, nobody nobody has the capacity to last the three days. But anyway. They they have to do that anyway, and then there's a there's a festive parade to City Hall, and at City Hall there is the entire city government assembled and half the national cabinet, <laughs> because it has th- this this transfer of power in Maastricht is looked on as a uh, favourite outing for national uh, governmental officers as well, you know. So they like to to <laughs> thinking, come on, you know. This, Power is being wrested from the incompetent uh, city government for three days, and you sit there and happily get insulted. Do they you know, get to, Do they draw? Do they draw straws <laughs> on who gets to come to Maastricht? I, I don't know how it works. 
I know that I know that when when I was when I was working in the Hague, at at a certain point, I I was being asked if it was advisable to go there, and I mean, <laughs> it's just, that was I've I've seen some stupid things happen during my years at at, at the uh, the ministry in the Hague, but this this had to take the cake. I mean, to <laughs> ask a native of Maastricht if it was wise for the minister to go there, come on, please. But yeah, you can you can imagine that the, the minister at the time was from was from uh, a very very strict uh, Protestant background. So that you know that <laughs> <laughs> made it made all the Limburgians at the ministry roar. You know, we had we had a good time. Anyway, of course, I advised him to go. And of course, then, then uh, you know, all the all the layers of authority uh, above me had to had to second that because otherwise, you know, it still wouldn't have happened. It's not as <laughs> if I I got to tell the minister anything. You know, that's not how that works. Anyway, what what happens at City Hall is that the Templiers come in with their prince and with their master of ceremonies, who will then proceed to tell the city government that they have just basically effed up everything in the past year and they deserve to be deposed. <laughs> and then the mayor <laughs> the mayor will hold a speech protesting none of this is true or all of that is different and the Templars the Templars themselves are not scot free because look at stupid this and look at ridiculous that. <laughs> but but the end of the entire song and dance and quite a bit of it is song. You know, there there will be there will be lots of singing going on. It is it is a very inter it, it is a very entertaining show to to watch. But of course, it relies heavily on the talent of the master of ceremony of the Templiers yeah. and of the mayor. Mm. So it it is <laughs> it has to be one of the qualifying characteristics of a mayor of Maastricht <laughs> that you are capable of putting on this show. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. You know, the, the 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 present mayor is the is the first lady mayor we, yes. we have had, and um, uh, she she sort of blew everyone away first time she had to she had to do <laughs> this by appearing in not not the not the sober uh, black and white of of a man's costume, but in a very uh, a very elegant outfit in the carnival colours. So <laughs> ev everybody sort of went ah, you know, and she. She comes up with fun and games that are yeah. quite ent entertaining every year again, defending her rule of the city together with her aldermen and the council. Yes. <laughs> but it is, it is all to no avail. The Templiers win this uh, battle over uh, who will rule the city for the next three days. And uh, it is at that point that the wooden clown on a stick which is the scepter of the of yes. the mock ruler the prince is replaced by a silver one oh. that is that is his official symbol of power over the city he is mm. given a scepter with a silver fool's head mm. where are these things kept during the year are they kept at city hall or in someone's cupboard <laughs> <laughs> I suppose not. I don't know. I don't know. But of course, they have to be well guarded. And, yes. And when when the prince is 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 uh, uh, bouncing about on the streets during the three days, he is also not carrying this silver uh, scepter. No. <laughs> because you know, he's waving it about all the time. So th yes. then it's the then it's the wooden one. But the official token of having taken over power is yes. the, is a silver scepter. Mm. Okay, so then everything is in place for the official celebrations to start. Of course, half the city doesn't doesn't care about any of this. You know, the schools and many offices and stuff like that. They will they will have celebrations on the Friday. <laughs> uh, groups of friends and families yeah. and whatnot will be roaming about the city on Saturday, but the official start is on Sunday. Okay. And the official start involves a tiny cannon and a, and a huge woman. Yes, we've got pictures of both the tiny cannon and the huge woman. <laughs> so if you're watching the uh, the video, you can see the the extent of the tiny tiny cannon and the massive yeah. woman. <laughs> and the, and the, the tiny cannon gives off a surprisingly loud noise, <laughs> and it is it is one of the remnants of the Momus times. 
I mean, the, yes. it's it's called the Mommers Canon, and uh, it is it is a high honor if you are allowed to uh, <laughs> uh, light it, and and of course there will be eleven shots made. Yes. And that is the start of Carnival, and then the prince goes from the part of the Vreethof where the cannon is being shot to the part of the Vreethof where uh, they have put an very large effigy of the Mall's Reef. Yes. <laughs> so that is the that is the statue of the market woman which stands on the market in stone, except her huge version is of wicker mm -hmm. and cloth and papier mache. Yes. And she will be hoisted up on her <laughs> pole. Yeah. Out of reach of everybody, although we have lost several malls weaver to oh, being no. set, set on fire. Oh my people. goodness. Yes, by people Yeah, by people who thought that was funny. That's horrifying. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't stumble onto the party on one day when they were burning a mouth weaver. Yes. <laughs> I would have run the opposite direction. Yes. Some kind of sacrifice going on yeah. in the <laughs> Carnival. Yeah, but the, it happens. I mean, pe people will get up to stupid shit. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes. this was this was one of them. But anyway, she is she is very high up on that pole, and she will be there until midnight on Tuesday. So we'll get to that in a minute. Because first, uh, when when the cannon is shot and the morse beef is hoisted, <laughs> we're good to go. So then it's, you know, celebration in the streets all over the place. And, I mean, you, you have to see that to understand what that means. Uh, and, and, you know, preferably you have to be in the middle of it uh, because it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't get put into words very well. So I'm not, got, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Maastricht for decades now has attempted to have a parade on the Sunday yes. and we, we only ever partially succeed uh, for, for people who watch the humongous parades in the German cities which run like clockwork and which are absolutely spectacular with gigantic floats and tons of candy being thrown into it. To be fair, there are floats. <laughs> yeah, some. But, you know, none of that in Maastricht. You know, if that's, if that's what you like, watch the television or go to one of the German cities, but none of that in Maastricht. I mean, no. there, there, there is... There is never a dull moment, really, <laughs> because, you know, the people, the spectators are really participants as well, generally, mm -hmm. and the parade, it's the, the participants in the parade will change between being spectator and participant <laughs> just, just as they feel like it. So people are going in and out of the parade. There are some <laughs> floats. There are spectacular yes. groups. There is all sorts of street theater going on. Mm. You know, pe people uh, getting into all sorts of nonsense, uh, asking questions of distributing stuff or engaging spectators in, in fun and games. There's, there's <laughs> constantly something going on. But please do not expect a regular parade. No. I mean, I think I think one of my favorite things is the first time we went, uh, we were sort of near the end where it was supposed to end. No one had any idea where they were supposed to go or where they were supposed to finish. <laughs> and so everyone just got to the end and was sort of wandering around and then slowly funneling onto the Vratov, like, what do we do? And so the Vratov was filled with just people from the parade, really confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's you know it's that's how it works. You know, each individual and each group and each band and you know whatever. Yeah, everybody sort of can decide in the spur of the moment what it is they would like to be doing. You know, as long as it, as long as it is celebratory, of course. Yeah. So that you know that that is that is what happens on Sunday afternoon. And then, then there'll be a bit of a lull when people will be going home to eat or have a snack somewhere at, at, at one of the at one of the venues where that's possible. And then the 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 evening celebrations definitely have a different vibe. But it's you know it is it is fascinating and entertaining to just to just wander about the city and find the music and participate in the singing and the dancing, or just go and sit somewhere and watch all the nonsense going on. <laughs> yes, and then on the Monday um, there is a parade again, much later in the day than you would than you <laughs> you would expect. <laughs> 
I think it really only starts around three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, wow. So you know, if yeah, well, I mean, if you've had a wild night, you really don't want to <laughs> be yeah. in a parade again at ten o'clock. <laughs> Come on, the children's parade is on is on Monday, and and then the, then the families and the and the children will be out in droves, and that is the, and and the uh, the children's parade will will usually have have all sorts of groups of children as well. So you know, choirs or schools or you know yeah. what have you, and that's that that's enjoyable to watch. And the and and the prince is waiting for them on the Vrijdhof. Oh. So at the at the very end of the parade, you get to salute the prince, and uh, the prince and the Templiers will be running around frantically, uh, giving out special children's medals to as many <laughs> children as they can match. <laughs> And it's uh, so so. There's loads of children in Maastricht who, over the years, have have managed to uh, build up a collection of these uh, kinderknöpjes to uh, to show off how how often they have been decorated. You know, look at me. <laughs> look at my medals. <laughs> and of course, this year, that because this, of course, was one of the things that the Templiers could could continue doing and that yeah. was that was giving all these medals to the adults and make them uh, knights and dukes and whatever <laughs> you know an entire entire mock regimen of decorations and of course they were handing out the, the children's medals as well but um, uh, demand far outstripped the amount of medals they had so oh, I can imagine <laughs> Uh, anyway, Monday Monday night uh, uh, that is uh, Sunday night on repeat. <laughs> yeah, yes. just b go out there and enjoy yourselves. Uh, Tuesday is the day of the concerts and the competitions. So then the uh, the drunk bands and the summer bands and everybody else who uh, makes music can present themselves to a jury and will give concerts all around the city and. Um, as I said before, everybody gets first prize. <laughs> and then Tuesday evening is, uh, okay, you throw everything you have into it for the last few hours and around 11 o'clock in the evening, people start to congregate on the Vreithof. So at midnight, the Vreithof is packed from wall to wall. Mm. And there will be a large truck of public works, the municipal public works, and a few minutes before midnight, the prince will appear on top of the truck and they will take his scepter and they will take his mm. cap. And at the same time, so that's the end of his reign, and at the yes. same time, the Morsweave will be lowered down from her high pole onto the truck, and that is the end of Carnival. That's so sad. It <laughs> is. Mo Sweef getting carted away. At least she doesn't get burned every year or something. She yeah. gets put away for the next year. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> and then people are hugging each other and yeah. singing and crying and, you know, <laughs> and flares are lit. And uh, it is impressive. Yeah. I think people will uh, will really appreciate the hugging um, <laughs> next time they're able to. Oh, yes. <laughs> next Won't time we're know. able to hug. I, <laughs> oh, gosh, yes. I think that's something people will definitely appreciate. There'll be lots of singing and hugging and <laughs> yeah. next time we can have carnival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which will hopefully be next year. Oh, yes. Let's hope yes, so. fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. And then the and then the final chapter is um, almost immediately after that the Vreedhof will empty out. Only mm. only a ver very uh, few people, generally teenagers, will will still you know insist on continuing <laughs> the celebrations. But the vast majority will just turn and leave and go home. Yeah, and sleep. <laughs> yeah, not no not to no not necessarily sleep. no. <laughs> Not necessarily. Yeah, a lot. Lots of people will also maybe still still have a goodbye drink here or there. But <laughs> you know, it's it's basically over by then. And 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 one thing that 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 really that really illustrates that is how how people will leave the Vreithof in the direction of our sweet ladies square. The 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 musicians will will gather and play a funeral dirge. Oh. Yes. And people will mass behind them and walk down the street in the direction of Our Sweet Lady Square yes. at the pace of this funeral march. 
<laughs> and that is that is also that is really really impressive. And then the vast majority of us then does not feel like you know it's over, it's done. Uh, we're going home. We'll see each other again in our normal guys. Yes. Where we've yeah, where we've we where we are done sleeping, <laughs> and then maybe maybe when we've when we've had some some herring the day after, <laughs> <laughs> that is also customary. You sort of ease out of the celebrations by having another small celebration. <laughs> With beer and herring, yeah, okay, but then it's that, then really on that same day because that is Ash Wednesday, you know, yes. that's the that's the first day of the forty days preceding Christmas, uh, uh, Easter. I mean Easter. Yes. And really on Ash Wednesday, you are supposed to be in church. And yeah, <laughs> I feel like su- not too many people are probably no. going to be in the mood for church. <laughs> no, but that is, you know, that is how it is how it is integrated into the Catholic calendar. You are supposed <laughs> to be in church yes. where you will be given on Ash Wednesday a cross on your forehead from mm. ash as okay. in ashes to ashes. Yes. You know, you were you were born. You came from ash, and you will return to ash. Mm. You know, you will be reminded of your mortality and and of the need to live a good life. And of course, everybody has just celebrated life for three days, <laughs> so <laughs> it yes. is a bit harsh. <laughs> and the the I don't know if it's everywhere, but in Maastricht at least, it is public holidays on yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Yes. And that is still happening this year, I think, for a lot of people. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I know that my partner, who works at the university, uh, yeah. definitely has the two days off still. So we yeah, have yeah. our own little carnival celebration. <laughs> yeah, I, su- I suppose most employers would, would just, you know, Yes, it would it. be a bit mean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to take that yeah. away. Yeah, well it would be kind of... it would be really mean spirited. But in the in the Protestant part of the of the Netherlands, so that's mm-hmm. sort of north of the north of the rivers of the yes. big rivers, okay. that is absolutely not the case. People yeah. are it is carnival is not being celebrated uh, uh, unless in a few isolated pockets here or there. Mm-hmm. People are just people are simply working on that Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. I didn't know how yeah. localized <laughs> the public holiday situation was. But, um, well, yeah, basic, basically, south of the rivers. Yeah, okay. Basically, so, you know, the Catholic half of the country. Yes. The traditionally Catholic part of the country. So Brabant and Limburg, those two provinces, they will celebrate Carnival, each in their own way. Yes. But, uh, yes, we are doing something else during those three days. So, you know, leave us alone. And yeah. then, uh, yeah. I have some uh, I have some last remarks about uh, uh, for, for for the newbies in town, <laughs> and that is that the most important one here is that carnival is is not a spectator sport. No. But but absolutely emphatically not at all. It is it is not a show we put on for the tourists. So we 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 absolutely love it when you just jump in and participate. <laughs> and if you have any questions, ask us. We will happily answer you. And I've seen <laughs> I have seen people doing this in all sorts of ways to uh, you know unsuspecting guests who found themselves in the middle of all this as as you <laughs> <laughs> as you did during your first year. So you know we will we will we will be happy to inform you, but we will love it if you just get in. Yeah. Just. Oh, and it and it doesn't matter uh, what your costume is. You can just take your shower curtain and put a sieve on your head. <laughs> you know, fine, you know, fine. Get a lampshade, then you can be like Lucy. Yes, <laughs> a family of lampshades. <laughs> yeah, you can you can just do that. It, you know, it doesn't matter. We we generally do not appreciate have a lot of appreciation for off the rack store bought stuff. Uh, it's it's a fairly recent thing that we have shops in town now <laughs> that are full of ready-made costumes yes. and they look cheap and they are uninspired. Yeah, you know, if you if you're stuck for something, go and get yourself a, a cow's costume there if you must. <laughs> but to us, that basically looks uh, lazy and not interested. So, but of course. You know, up to you. 
you can do that, and uh, and at times it can be it can be really entertaining. It is it is of course generally uh, teenagers and students who will opt for these for these options. <laughs> Oh shit! Is it carnival already? I don't have a costume, and then five <laughs> five minutes later, you have a costume. So that's sorted, and it can it can make for really for really uh, funny um, yeah meetings. <laughs> in the, I I remember one night I was I was walking home, and my outfit for the past couple of years has been a massive white sparkly affair, and uh, I'm generally by myself. And I was on this. I was on this very dark little alleyway uh, somewhere in the fortifications. <laughs> and I must have. I must have looked like a ghost. I can't imagine that. I, <laughs> I, I passed a park bench, and there were four animals on there: a cow, a pig, <laughs> and a, I don't know something. And I startled them. <laughs> <laughs> not 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 on purpose, but you know they sort of went, oh, you know, like that. <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and of course, I was I was very amused by the sight of this congregation of animals on <laughs> a park bench in the middle of the night. So. I uh, we dressed up last year, and uh, we I made my costume. I um, we were Tintin tin and Snowy. Oh, wow. uh, because I Matthew is a tall ginger man, and so he has to do very little to be Tintin, and he was recognised. Uh, <laughs> people kept asking him where. If I wasn't next to him, people would ask him where I where Snowy was. Where's Although Snowy? you don't call him Snowy, you call him I something was, else. Yes, I was just going to say that for the for the Dutch listeners, Katrina is the little dog. About- <laughs> The yeah. little white dog. <laughs> Katrina is talking about Kerfje and Bobby. And Bobby, yeah. Bobby. The little the little dog is called Bobby here. Yeah, so people would ask him, uh, where is Bobby? <laughs> and then I would pop and say, I'm here. I am very white and fluffy <laughs> with a black, big black nose. Yes, uh, you were. That nose was terrific. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I also in in the uh, in the weeks before in the months before the Friday markets when they're normally on a on a Friday the big markets with all the fabric there'll be an uptick yeah. in people walking around with huge huge meters and meters of yeah. faux fur and all <laughs> all yeah. bright bright purple faux fur and you're like what are you making for carnival yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is always exciting seeing people buy all this crazy fabric <laughs> yeah. To see what yeah. people come up with. Yeah, and there's an there's an enormous supply of that sort of stuff too. I mean, uh, uh, of course, all my life I've I've walked around in homemade costumes, but yes, <laughs> you know, for for the longest time there was there were no specifically carnival materials available mm. at all, and now you can find half the market with with stalls offering you know all imaginable colours and fabrics <laughs> and glitter and glamour and all yes. sorts, and it's yeah, but that's you know that's recent, and it you know it speaks of course also to to the accumulated wealth over the years I mean we we um, we will be posting some some old footage of carnival and yeah. you can you can just see how poor uh, most of the populace has been for mm. a long time you can just see it in in how people would celebrate carnival yeah anyway I think uh, I need something to drink I'm pretty much <laughs> <laughs> this this lecture was long enough <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, yes, I am. I am very sorry. The lecture is not going to be followed by the practicum of uh, carnival itself. But um, <laughs> at least, at least, we hope uh, that we've provided uh, some entertainment yes. with this uh, with this explanation. And of course, it will be up uh, in the future as well. So if you are listening from the future and you are about to celebrate carnival then <laughs> you are very lucky and we wish you luck in your <laughs> carnival adventures we are we are still uh, mid pandemic and hoping for for better carnival times <laughs> yes uh but a big thank you to lucy thank you for our our educational carnival lecture <laughs> <laughs> make it sound but- much more serious than it is <laughs> You know, you know I love doing this. So, <laughs> and um, we hope we'll be able to do this in person soon. <laughs> yes, would be good. Thank you, Katrina. 
Thank you so much for listening to our Carnivology lecture and another big thank you to Lucy for putting the talk together. We really hope you enjoyed it. Outside of pandemic times, this would normally be a ticketed event for Meet Maastricht. So if you found value in this lecture or just really enjoyed it, please consider donating to us. There will be a link to donate anywhere you see this lecture. Don't forget to check out our podcast, the Meet Maastricht podcast. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to keep up to date with all our events and new content. Thanks again and happy carnival.